What, do, what are those economic impacts that don't just affect, you know, like we can see what happens when the uh, close-in areas are more expensive and the further out areas are, are less expensive, right? We see congestion on the freeways, we see people living in Riverside County and commuting here for work. Mm -hmm. um, what are, but what are the impacts that go sort of beyond the local level and actually impact state or national economy? Right, well, you know, I think it really is an important driver of, of wages. I mean, you know, uh, here in, in San Diego, probably not all that far from here, uh, there's the border between the United States and a whole other country. Um, and I think it's pretty well understood that people who are born in Mexico can often greatly increase their wages and their living standards by moving across the border to a richer country where there's more job opportunities. Uh, and you know, when people do that, at some great personal risk to themselves, moving to places with a different language. Uh, so you might want to ask, you know, inside the United States, why don't we see mass population migration to San Jose, to Washington, D.C., to Boston, to San Francisco? Those are the, the highest wage cities. Um, instead, when you see people moving, is you see people moving to Texas, and you see people moving to North Carolina, and to Nevada. Um, and they're doing that because they're moving toward cheap housing and to an extent toward good weather. But there's great weather here. Um, people really, they move to where local political authorities want to build houses for them to come to. Uh, but when they move to low wage areas rather than to high wage areas, that means they end up making lower wages, uh, you know, which, which is bad. In environmental terms, four out of the five metro areas that have the lowest uh, carbon dioxide emissions per capita States are here in California. Uh, the, the other one is Providence, Rhode Island, which I don't know why it's so low. Um, but, but California, coastal California in particular, is an extremely green place to live, uh, in part because there's sort of a strong environmental legacy here, and in part because good weather is good for the environment. You don't uh, you know, burn nearly as much fuel heating homes here in San Diego as, as you might in Boston. Um, but so when people can't move here, when they move instead to Texas, it turns out that they can double or more the amount of carbon dioxide emissions that are associated with their daily life. So, I mean, that's an impact that, it's basically invisible. I mean, you see the people who commute from far away, but you don't see the people who move to a whole different region of the country. And the impact of that, it's not just national, it's global. And it's, um, you know, and it's, it's not something people, you know, quite give, I, I would say, almost any thought to. And yet, if you think about it, if coastal California cities uh, grew more and became denser, you know, not only would, would people be engaged in a lower carbon footprint, but the per capita emissions would fall even further, uh, because you would have a more sort of traditional urban form that in its own way is more sustainable than uh, some of what you see in the West Coast. 